and I am going to ask uh, Martina Olley from Southampton City Council to turn your camera on and unmute yourself. Good, Good morning, morning Martina. Hi, Good morning. Um, How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Good. It's Look lovely to have to you here. For everybody this morning. Yeah. So as some of you will be aware, there are a lot of changes happening in Southampton at the moment. And I would probably be right in saying there are even more in the pipeline. And so what we really want to do is to make sure that you, as part of our, of our connection with you, is to make sure that you know what is coming, that you know how to engage with that, and that you can keep your staff, your visitors, and, and all the people coming to your site properly appraised and plan for those changes and put you in a really good position to take advantage of those changes and how it enables people to travel differently. Is that a fair representation of what I've asked you to talk about today? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, you specifically said about cycle infrastructure, but if yes. it goes slightly so, further than that, and yeah. of course, no scheme is just purely for just one group of, of um, yeah. users. Uh, so it does go beyond the, so like, the different modes, of course. Brilliant. And at almost exactly quarter past when I said I would ask you to start speaking, can I ask you to share your screen and take it away for me? Thank you very much. Do you let me know when you can see the screen, please? This sometimes takes a little bit of a while. Yes, I can see that. Fantastic. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to be talking particularly about cycle infrastructure within Southampton and even more so about our future plans, what we're going to be doing over the next year and so and slightly beyond that. Um, have as I could prepare the presentation, it just contains the key schemes which we're going to be working at over the next year or so. Um, my name is Martina Olli. I'm the TCF program manager and I'm also the delivery manager for transport infrastructure schemes within Southampton. TCF, for those who haven't heard of that, that's Transforming Cities Fund. That is a very significant program funded by the DFT which is a joint programme between Hampshire and Southampton. I have to say, though, today I'm obviously talking to you as a Southampton City Council officer, so I've restricted myself to schemes which are within the Southampton boundaries. I'm not touching on those within Hampshire, so outside the boundary, but the TCF is very much a programme which goes beyond the boundary. Um, starting off with some schemes in the city centre, and then as you can see on this slide, uh, with the blue dots going up to the sports centre, then to the north of the city, then going towards uh, Portswood, and then cross the river, across the Itchen to the east side of the city, and then come back by the Itchen Bridge to, to Salt Marsh. Um, so the following slides have got a bit more detail on each of those schemes and those areas. So moving swiftly on to the city centre. We've got the number of um, city centre schemes which are going to be progressed over the next um, year and beyond. These are all uh, transforming cities fund schemes which have been worked on in, in the planning for some time and all come now sort of like to, to sort of like the, the, the implementation stage over the next year or so. Starting off with the Civic Centre Junction, this is an upgrade of the junction and whilst it is the signals which are going to get upgraded, we will also upgrade the cycle infrastructure and where we currently have most of the crossings um, with traffic crossings, we will be putting in the pedestrian signals. So again, significant improvements for people walking and cycling across this quite key, quite busy and large junction. Moving on to East Park Terrace and New Road, um, East Park Terrace will become bus, taxi and cycles only. So that will reduce all the or will eliminate all the through traffic which currently goes along that road. It will improve the connectivity between the park area and Solent University. It will improve bus journey times, bus journey uh, time reliability, um, and will create just an extension of this park area into uh, the, the university and make it easier for university students and visitors to the university to connect back into uh, the, the park and through to the, the cultural quarter around Guildhall Square. Um, it, it is the intention to start this autumn 
We still have a few hurdles to go through, um, but that's the, the current program is to start this autumn with this scheme. This also includes improvements to the junction with New Road, and we will also be extending the bus lanes along New Road as much as we can, um, where we have got currently some slightly short um, areas, short areas, so we will extend bus lanes all along New Road to the maximum to provide this additional bus priority. And again, it's about journey time savings for buses, it's a time about journey time reliability liability for buses so that operators can really maximize uh, sort of like their, their, their timetabling. Moving on to uh, the next scheme on there that is Portland Terrace bus gate. Um, it's quite fair to say quite a controversial scheme, but it will bring quite significant benefits to buses. Again, it's all about this um, uh, allowing buses to more easy, easy access to the city centre. So again, that will be a bus gate which will allow buses, taxis and cycles through um, Portland Terrace. The actual bus gate is very short section. It just goes from south of Spa Road to north of the access to shop mobility. So on that stretch of road, there are no direct access points. So all the current access to residential properties, to businesses will be maintained, but you just won't be able to come from both sides anymore. So yes, you will have to find different routings potentially. You will have to come from one side, but all access is guaranteed and is continued to be provided. But again, it means that this route will the traffic will reduce very significantly, it will make the area better for walking and cycling, and it will provide a better connection between West Quay and the High Street because the traffic reduction will be quite significant. And Another scheme in the very much in a similar area is our Albion Place Bus Hub and Urban Park, a very key, it's actually one of the cornerstones um, within the Transforming Cities Fund programme, because this is the most historic part of the city. We've got the city walls, we've got the old castle, um, and currently this area is occupied by two uh, car parks, um, which really don't give that area justice. So we are proposing to um, create on one of the car parks a bus hub uh, which will allow all moves for buses so you can come from this as a bus you can come from the south move back to the south or come from the north go back to the north so in terms of bus flexi or bus operator flexibility it will provide all the the need for the future and will future proof this area for buses and the current Castle Way car park will become an urban park so in this very historic center of town we will create the first park within the old town and I think it is nearly 60 years so that is really quite a, a key milestone and um, the the, um, the scheme is currently at as a, in as a planning application so we need planning permission to change the use of those areas from car parks to bus hub and urban park um, and the planning application is currently running. Uh, we should have a determination and therefore knowing whether or not it can go ahead in late August. And if everything goes to plan, again, we will be starting in autumn, late autumn, with construction of that scheme. And then not actually mentioned or not shown in the in the in the map, we also are currently designing a city centre wide 20 mile an hour. You probably have heard about the 20 mile an hour programme within Southampton, where most of the residential areas we are planning on turning into 20 mile an hour areas. We've had um, Shirley and Fremantle will be starting soon, the, the, the work on there as well as um, Woolston. And some areas have already been like the Polygon, like St Dennis, and Bassett East and West have already been turned into 20 mile an hour. It will just create a much safer environment for pedestrians and cyclists. And once that is all uh, rolled out across the city um, and 20 mile an hour becomes the norm within the city, it will make a huge difference to how people can move around our city. Moving on swiftly to the next one, the sports centre access. Um, we've been successful in obtaining some funding from low, uh, LUF, uh, Leveling Up Fund, for improvements to the sports centre. And with this approximately 20 million to rebuild some of the parts of the city of the sports centre, we've also um, have obtained some funding to improve access to the sports centre for cycling and walking. And, and we are progressing those uh, schemes 
um, over the next year or two. So the, the levelling up fund um, is running until uh, 25. So not all these schemes will come to fruition or will be implemented over the next year. So they are slightly longer term, but we're very much starting uh, with feasibility um, on, on all of those schemes in, in the very near future. So they are um, starting off with Winchester Road cycle route. So that will create a connection along Winchester Road and from the common through into the sports centre. We then have got Hill Lane, which connects Hill Lane into the sports centre, uh, where we currently, I mean, if you know this area, it is quite difficult for cyclists and pedestrians to access the sports centre from that route. We also are looking at uh, the Dunkirk Road area, uh, looking to introduce an active travel zone there. The, the sports centre will have a new car park in that area, so there will be an addi additional traffic. So we need to see how we um, mitigate uh, that additional traffic and make sure that the residents of this area are protected, that they can move and in encourage them to move by active travel, by active modes uh, around into and out of this area. Coxford Road, again, there is currently a path from that side into the sports centre and we will ensure that there is better access across Coxford Road to connect with the sports centre and also beyond into the residential areas around Coxford Road. And lastly but not least is Golf Course Road. Those who know Golf Course Road, it's quite a narrow road. It is the main access to the golf course within the sports centre. So we're looking at ways to improve that for pedestrians, but also for cyclists that link. And of course, then create a better connection from Bassett Avenue into and out of the sports centre. Moving on to um, north of the common, Glen Eyre Road. Um, that is a scheme which has started already. Those of you who go through that area will know that where the letter A is, that's the junction of Glen Eyre Road with Birches Road, which is currently under construction. So that will add um, cycle facilities, to that junction. It also extends the footway on the south side, which those of you who know the area well, there's an awful lot of students that go through that area because you've got the main campus of Southampton University just to the right there. You can see those buildings in the bottom right of the slide. And then of course you've got the Highfield campus up on the left, that's also Southampton University campus. And there's a lot of student movements through that junction. And that footpath on the side, on the south side, is very narrow. So we are widening that. Uh, we are improving the pedestrian crossings across that junction, but also connect the, the cycle movements from Lovers Walk into and through that junction and up Glen Air. Phase two, which will be starting very soon, um, is then concentrating on Glen Air Road up to Violet Road, which is currently a mini roundabout, which will be turned into a giveaway junction. We're introducing one of the first cycle streets within the city. Uh, so having very wide cycle lanes along that road, narrow um, carriageway, to uh, ensure that drivers that driver speeds will come down and therefore will make it much safer for cyclists to go along this road. And then there will be a phase three to the north of the student halls um, up to connect to um, Bassett um, Avenue, which will be part of um, build outs and will make that area much more cycle friendly with cycle friendly build outs. We're also looking at having cycle hire and e-scooter hubs along this stretch of road. And that will start in the autumn and will then complete this scheme on this corridor. Moving on to the Portswood corridor, we've got the number of schemes um, along there and you probably have heard about um, the Portswood Broadway where we are uh, looking at introducing a bus gate. We had the first uh, uh, part of the consultation last October. November and that resulted in a lot of questions and we have gone away done our house work uh, homework and uh, have um, obtained further data, further evidence, further and have undertaken further analysis and we will be going out for a phase two consultation in August, September of this year to just uh, gain more 
feedback from residents, from visitors, from businesses in the area. The Portsmouth Broadway, uh, again, similar to um, Portland Terrace, it will be a very short bus gate, which will ensure that access is guaranteed to all the businesses, to all the residential properties in the area. But the key is to reduce through traffic. There is currently a lot of through traffic through the Broadway, which doesn't stop there, which just um, is to the detriment of the area. So we want to make sure that those that through traffic uses Thomas Lewis Way, which has ultimately been built for the through traffic through this area, and make sure that we can really improve the Broadway, we can improve the bus stops, we can add additional pedestrian space, better crossing facilities, we can also add green space and seating to really create an attractive uh, district centre in this area. We are mindful that, of course, there could always be additional rat running that people don't want to necessarily use um, Thomas Lewis Way. So we are also looking at introducing an active travel zone within Highfield that is um, shown there in B with B in blue to ensure really that that rat running um, doesn't occur, that people do use the key routes around the area. Um, so there is various different ways of um, doing that. There is some more softer measures. There is hard measures in terms of modal filters where you physically couldn't go through the area anymore by vehicular mode, but it will still obviously be uh, able for pedestrians and cyclists to go through the area. So we will be working with the local residents through co-design workshops um, to, um, to, to define the, the final um, ATZ measures. But of course, all this is very much dependent on the outcome of this next phase of consultation. We then have a much smaller scheme, um, C there, where we are improving the cycle um, routes along Portswood uh, Road from Gordon Avenue down to Avenue Road. We have done some undertaken some resurfacing on that road and we will be adding some green surface across the side roads just to make sure that um, those, those cycle routes are safer. And construction is ongoing. You need to leave some time between resurfacing and adding the, the green surface. So that will happen August, September to complete this scheme. And then another key scheme along this corridor is the Lodge Road Junction Improvement show there in D in dark blue. So that will be a signal technology improvement. So we'll put in new signals which have better detection. And we will also be putting in a lot of cycle infrastructure, cycle provision to make it much easier to cycle through this junction. And the improvements will include both the Portswood Road, Lodge Road Junction, as well as the Beavis Hill, Beavis Valley Junction. Of course, that will connect into a very early scheme which we put in along Beavis Valley, which is the shared path, which uh, is what is the cycle route out through Portswood and therefore it will continue that cycle route up and through uh, Portswood Road. Moving on to the next area, that is St. Denis area, where we are working on the St. Denis Transport Corridor. We have just completed the scheme on Belmont Road, St. Denis um, Road, and we're moving on to the next scheme along that corridor, uh, which is looking at uh, providing segregated cycle lanes between Copton Bridge and Adelaide Road, Kent Road, also upgrading the crossings on the Priory Road, St. Denis Road Junction with new facilities for pedestrians and cyclists. We still have to go through another traffic regulation or the consultation, which will be uh, published shortly. And subject to that being successful, we are looking again at starting later this year um, uh, with construction of this scheme. Now, moving on over to the other side of the city, Bitten Road East. Uh, where we are looking at providing a segregated cycle route with improved crossings along Bitten Road East, shown there is the extent of that scheme. Public consultation for this scheme will take place in August and September. And then we're looking, obviously, again, out, uh, subjective to outcome of the consultation, we're looking at the construction from May next year for that scheme. That's quite a significant scheme linking into the Bitten District Centre and connecting to the east of the city. Moving on to the next corridor, quite a key corridor uh, within our future schemes, the Portsmouth Road Corridor. We've got the Wolston and Itchen Active Travel Zone, which is funded through TCF, which has commenced, which we will be continuing throughout the next year. 
Um, uh, in shown there in yet in yellow is the, the the cross or the 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 route the cycle route and pedestrian route across Radstock Road, um, which creates a new cycle link to Pool Road uh, and Cycleway. We then also have the Eastern Quiet Way. Uh, again, that is a TCF funded scheme where we are upgrading junctions along Manor Road South, Porchester Road, Station Road, Spring Road to create the safe Quiet Way route, parallel route to. Portsmouth Road, because Portsmouth Road is quite narrow, we can't really widen it, the footways are too narrow to create any cycle provision along this corridor. So we decided we would focus on the quiet parallel route to provide for cycle movements and pedestrian movements. We are looking at starting construction on this scheme again this autumn um, um, after some consultation which we've carried out uh, recently. And then the last scheme on this um, corridor is funded by our Safe Roads Fund, which is, 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 a, is a grant from uh, the government uh, for some hotspots in terms of safety, where we have managed to obtain some funding. Um, and that will look at improved pedestrian crossings west of Botley Road Junction and west of Spring Junction, as well as continuous footways along Fort Road. And we're looking at starting uh, construction on those in early next year, so in January 2024. And then the, the last drag area, uh, where we are looking at um, improving the junction that again is funded by Safer Roads Fund, uh, where some of you probably know that was originally a roundabout. We introduced the cycle scheme some time ago. There is still some um, safety issues with this scheme. So we are looking at improvements to walking and particularly cycling, but also bus provision through this junction. This is in very early design stage. It is quite a significant scheme. So we are still working on the design of this and the timeline for implementation is yet to be determined. So that was a whist tour around the city um, of the key schemes for next year and beyond. Um, that put, brings us to the questions. Um, I haven't kept track of, of the um, of the uh, of the chat, but there are there the, the key links. So there is the link to the Transport Southampton um, connecting Southampton website, where you can see a screenshot of it. If you want any further information on any of those schemes, my contact details there. If you've got any questions um, following on from this um, briefing, feel free to get in touch if you've got any specific questions. And I think at this point, Andy, if I can pass back to you to like moderate the questions. No problem at all. Thank you very much for that. That was both thorough and to the point, which is which is quite an achievement. I, I, that, that was really nice to, to see so so many things covered in such a short amount of time without it feeling squeezed or squashed. We've had two questions from the floor, which are really quite different. So so Mike has asked about the twenty mile an hour zones, and he has asked whether these are going to be. 20 miles per hour limits or whether they're going to be zones with the feeling that and this is obviously anecdotal that in Portsmouth the area where they are zones have been largely adhered to and where it's just a 20 mile an hour limit on a road they are routinely ignored does that make sense I think so, but please do correct me if I don't quite get the the, the question right I mean, we are looking at a area covering 20 mile an hour across all the residential areas um, with essentially just the key A roads remaining at 30. Um, I do agree with the, uh, with the person who put the question in that if you have isolated 20 mile an hour areas or even just streets, it is much more difficult for the drivers to understand or to remember, is this a 20, is this a 30? So by introducing 20 mile an hour across all the residential streets within Southampton, it will over time become the norm. So you know exactly you're in a residential street, um, you, 
that will be 20 mile an hour over time. This is all based on we put the call out to, to residents, to residents' organisations, and we had an awful lot of responses to that. A lot of people really said it is important that you progress this scheme. Um, and it is supported across the parties within Southampton. So that is really good news. Um, we are looking at the programme, at implementing that programme, but that is obviously all dependent on the funding as to when we can go ahead with that. Uh, but the idea is, the intention is to pretty much make the whole of Southampton 20 mile an hour all the time. Sorry, I shouldn't have. Anyway, um, so our next question has come from Sarah, and this is regarding the area around the Western Community Hospital. Are there any plans for William Way, Millbrook Road and those kinds of areas around the Western in the near future? Uh, in terms of what, in terms of 20 mile an hour or in terms of think, schemes? In, in, in terms of schemes and specifically around um, uh, pedestrian and cycle access into and out of the hospital is my guess. And Sarah, do correct me if I have paraphrased you incorrectly. <laughs> um, to the general sorry, guys, I can, I'm here. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Crack um, on. Very quickly is the Piers. Hi there, Martina. Hi. Sarah Jones here, Solent NHS, ex Southampton University Hospital. Um, is that there appear to be quite a lot of gaps in schemes around the hospital areas that um, it would be great to be able to work with you to see if there's any better access to the Western Community Hospital site for cyclists. There seem to be sort of project gaps in that location and I wonder if there are any plans ahead for that. Um, currently, no specific plans. We've done quite a lot of work over the past couple of years. We obviously supported the, the park and ride at Adenac Park. We also looked at improving signing. Uh, yeah, I, feel the I actually designed the park and ride with the General oh, Hospital, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as some of you may know, that the TCF programme does look into uh, providing a um, weekend park trial park and ride for the city centre. So we are still working on that, which is quite challenging in the current financial it climate. Is. But at least, you know, that the contribution has been made to, to the hospital towards that scheme. And it also now, of course, benefits the area around the general hospital because uh, staff park in the Adenuck um, no, I know. I understand that. I, it's, it's more really about the Western Community Hospital, which is next to the Tesco, just south of the red dot on your map um, for any cyclists. Obviously, I've got things like boy scooters on site and we're trying to host a barrel dock. Um, but I've got no safe access on and off the site and around the area. And I wonder if anyone was looking at that at all. Uh, we haven't looked at that. It's not contained within the okay. TCF programme. We've done some early work along uh, Millbrook um, Road West, of course. Okay. So that area has been treated very early on in the programme in actually tranche two of um, TCF. But of course, we can work with you to just see what we can do in terms yeah. of improvement, possibly just under the local plan. So please, we can set up a meeting. I'll and take that offline. That much further. Yeah, yeah, there is some great. connection there, obviously across to Bora Way. There is a, a cycle crossing and then you can go where I can't remember what the road is called. Why there's a residential Don't area worry. there. I have, I have so, access. It's my bike. Magic. Sorry, we're, we're I, I going over set, time, aren't we? <laughs> I will, no, it's fine. I will put you in touch with each other after after Brilliant. the meeting, Thank so you. I, I can I can arrange to do that. Thanks, um, guys. Martina, I have had a, I, mean, I say it's a question from the floor. It's basically from me. Um, how are we getting on with Central Station? <laughs> I haven't mentioned that. That was a complete omission of mine, isn't it? So obviously, again, as as most of you. Um, no, that is a scheme which is under construction. I think the reason why I didn't mention it because he asked me to talk mainly about cycle schemes. And of course, well, it is to do with cycling, to do with better access to the station yeah. overall. It is mainly about pedestrians and buses uh, on the south side. So we are on programme um, with the forecourt itself, um, programme to finish late July, August. Um, we then will have to drop back in, unfortunately, because of um, hostile vehicle mitigation measures, which have been stipulated to us by um, Network Rail. They need to be done for any um, station improvement from now on. 
And also we will be working on, of course, the access outside. So any changes to Western Esplanade, to the pedestrian cycle crossing, to the Toucan crossing to the east. Um, the overall works will be uh, programmed to finish in November this year. So it is quite a significant, it is one of the biggest yep. schemes within the program. So yes, it will take some time to finish, but we are currently on program with the overall scheme and on budget as well, which is all good news. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, you say it's there's a lot. November seems terrifyingly close, um, or or is pleasingly close. But for you know, for a start in February to November, people say, how can that take that long? But it, it was an awful lot of work yeah. already yeah. within the forecourt, and we will have all the work outside the forecourt. Excellent. That's been absolutely brilliant, Martina. It's really nice to get that update. It's amazing to see so much stuff happening ac across Southampton and. And to, and to see quite such a coverage, it's also really nice to see some stuff east of the river, which is which is always pleasing to see. Um, <laughs> as as I'm, I'm aware that that's something that is often levied at us. Um, I'm going to let you go.